impressions of the game as a whole, obviously, fourth quarter they came back a little bit. You guys were in control for a minute. Yeah, I thought we were control in control, you know, outside of that first uh, little run that they had to start the game. Once we kind of got it even and then we started to inch ahead, yeah, I thought for the next two and a half quarters we, we basically controlled the game. Uh, but, you know, that's what great teams do. They make a run. They made some, you know, great shots. Uh, Slocum and, uh, and Pivot came in, rested in that last quarter. And... Um, yeah, tightened it up, but I thought when we needed to, we hit some, we got some key stops late. And um, it was a really good, well-played basketball game by two really good teams. That, that, that's a good thing. I don't think either team is, is happy completely, um, but we should both be happy in that we, we, I think both of us played well, played good games. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I've seen him turn a corner. I, I think, uh, you know, we always see Sabrina do it. She's been pretty consistent at it. Uh, sometimes the other two aren't. And uh, tonight they were. They, and they have been for the last couple of weeks. So it's been really good to see. I think when those three are really dialed in, there's no three better in the country, you know, as, as a trio. So um, they set the tone for us. And, and they really make us go, I thought, early on. Ruthie was, was great early in the game uh, offensively. I think Sab carried us at times, and then Satu had moments. So it was, uh, you know, but somebody had mentioned Taylor Chavis. I thought she came in and, and played really, really well. She gives us good defense, and, and when she's shooting w well from the three-point line, that's a, an added bonus. What has she done in particular? It's really impactful play because even in the loss of ASU, she's one of the few plus players at Arizona. She's yeah. Stanford plus 40. What has she done? She plays both ends of the floor. You know, she can attack the basket. She's got that little floater that she put up a couple of times. She can hit the three, but she's really a good defender. I thought she did a good job on Pivik at times and Slocum at times. And, you know, it's just nice to have her out there. She can guard really, you know, three or four positions. Uh, and then I thought in the second half we did a much better job on Jones. You know, we, we were switching in the first half and we were doing this and we were doing that. And none of them involved stopping her. So second half we just uh, decided, you know, we're going to play behind her more, just position defense. And uh, I think she ended up maybe getting one basket, maybe two baskets in the second half. I don't, I don't know. It wasn't many. So uh, they did a, a good job. I thought our zone in the second quarter really um, kind of got us got us going. That, that got us going at both ends. We were forcing some turnovers. They got a little flustered, and that's when we built the lead. And without that lead, you know, maybe we don't have the finish that we ended up having. Well, they don't force many turnovers. I think they're last in the conference in forced turnovers, so that's no big deal. But um, well, I thought we had some dumb ones. And including a couple of our key players, just crazy passes all of a sudden. I thought we could have attacked that zone a little bit quicker. I thought we got a little desperate on some late shot clock shots. But, uh, you know, we don't see a lot of zone. We shoot the ball so well, we just never see zones. So, uh, you know, we, we um, could have maybe done a little bit better. But I, I'm really proud of the team. I thought we played really hard tonight, really hard. And uh, and they're a good team, man. It. I can't wait till Sunday. I mean, it's, uh, it's going to be quite a chess match, number one, and quite another battle. And I personally have never won there. Nobody on this team has won there. So I know that that's something that they, you know, they're, they're leaving quite a legacy here. I don't think they want a hole in that legacy with not winning at Gill. So my team's going to be ready, and I know Scott's will be too. And they weren't. How, how is she able, how can she influence games when she had, had her most effective doing other things? Well, she got us a couple extra possessions from the boards. Uh, I thought defensively she actually did a really good job. She was on Pivik a lot. Uh, Pivik was, you know, by her standards, kind of a non-factor tonight. Um, you know, she only got two offensive rebounds, and she's the best offensive rebounder in the, in the league, as far as I'm concerned. And she got both of those kind of late in the game. So uh, I thought Satu did a really good job defensively. She's getting better there and is understanding it better. 
Uh, yeah, she's figured out that if that shot's not going down, she can find other ways to help us, and she did. She did. I don't anticipate she's going to shoot, uh, what was she, one of seven from the three-point line. Again, that's, that's an aberration for her. When I got here six years ago, you could cut this by four and throw three of those out. There were maybe five, six people, right, for those that were here early. We didn't have a lot of attention. This is really neat. 12,400 fans out there, really neat. And they're engaged for both teams. Uh, you know, I listened to the starting lineup. There were Duck fans cheering for the Beavers, too. I mean, I know it's a, a heated rivalry, but we're still all Oregonians in terms of who we play for. And I think that's really special. What a great showcase. We had the WNBA commissioner here tonight. Uh, we had half the league's general managers or head coaches were here from the WNBA. Uh, so I think they, I, I, I'm, I for a fact know they wish their arenas looked like this. And um, I, I think it's incredible. This was an incredible show. Was the governor, did she end up showing? The governor's here, Representative DeFazio's here. I mean, this is a cool deal. This is a cool deal. And, uh, and I thought we gave everybody a great show tonight. And I think it's great for women's athletics. It's great for the University of Oregon, Oregon State. It's great for college basketball. This was an awesome night. This may not be duplicated anywhere in the country, what we just witnessed and saw. So. Hell, I don't know who's healthy from day to day. They, they show up in street clothes, and I go, well, I guess they're not playing tonight. <laughs> I leave that to the doctor. So we had a shorter bench than normal. Lydia was a, an emergency-only entry tonight. Still, still working through, uh, through her issues. God, we hope we get her back at some point soon, and, uh, and Lydia healthy as well, and Morgan too. So... Until then, everybody, the eight or so we had in, in uniform, got to step up and play. But we did that all year last year. It's uh, never fun, but I thought the ones that did play tonight played well, played hard. Kelly, do you like that chess match? You talked about that, being able to face Oregon State again within a couple of days. And watch the film from today. And <laughs> you know, I'll tell you, I, I can go either way. I would prefer that they scheduled a bye week with a one game. I think student athletes need it. From the time we start that first weekend of January until with the time that the Pac-12 tournament is over, they're playing every week at least twice a week. And every other one of those weekends, you're on your road. Unless, of course, you're the Ducks over the next uh, month and a half. And we play 10 games, eight of our next 10 games on the road. Um, I don't, good scheduling. <laughs> Um, so, but then the element of coming back two days later, I, I think that's great. That's kind of like an NBA playoffs, a WNBA playoffs. I think that's kind of cool. You know, there's more of a chess match, uh, for their student athletes bodies. I think it's better with a split for excitement and attention. I think it's great back to back. So it is what it is this year. So you know what? I'm so excited to play Sunday. Yeah. Kelly, you guys can change that, can't you? We can. Have it has to be agreed upon. Yep, we tried. we tried. We tried. It had to be agreed upon by both institutions, and it was not. So we played twice this week. Is that revisited every year, or is that just kind of you're going to accept that's the way it's going to be as long as you two are coaching here? No, we, we revisit it. We'll talk about it. It's just different circumstances. Um, you know, and for us, we would have actually liked the split this year because we have to go to Yukon. So next week we have a three game road trip. We're going to Salt Lake, Colorado, Yukon. And that wouldn't have been ideal. That would have been a little bit better on a single week. So, uh, but this is the way it worked out. And, uh, I don't even think the team understands what's going to go on in the next 10 days, five weekends or yeah, 10 games, five weekends. Uh, we're not going to make a big deal of it. No excuses. We're going to go play the games we're supposed to play. 
And at least the two games at home are gimmies. Yeah, Arizona and Arizona State, who just, man, I'll tell you, we, we, this is going to be a tough stretch coming up. A lot of fun. We'll be ready. All right, thanks, Coach. You guys, thank you. Thanks for coming.